f prime of x is, what did I just say, negative 6x squared plus 12x. Okay, what is the slope of the tangent line at negative 2? Negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, that's negative 24 minus 24. That's negative 48. That is a very, very steep line. A okay, very, very steep portion of the curve at negative 2, which we can see that. Clearly looking at the graph here, that is very, very steep right here. Very, very steep. Okay, let's move to negative 1. Now we could plug this in for any numbers in between here. I'm just going to stick to the whole numbers. When we do negative 1, we get negative 6 minus 12, which is negative 18, which... In its own respect, it's a very steep line. It's just not quite as steep as it was. Now, at zero, we should know. You shouldn't actually have to compute it. You should know, since it was a minimum, zero was a critical number. That means the value of the derivative there is zero. That's what I'm talking about right now. Yes, I'm trying to explain concavity from this uh, perspective. So let me go in and kind of sketch these tangent lines because I also want to talk about what Allie was using to explain to Paul right there because it's a good visual representation as well. Okay. Um, F prime of, I don't want to use one because it's a, I want to use one half right here. Okay. One half, one half squared is one fourth. So that's negative six over four. Um, plus 1 half of 12 is 6, but I want to express it as over 4 so I can combine those. Um, that's 18 over 4, which is like 4.5. So now we have a positive slope. Okay. F prime of 1. When we plug in 1, we get negative 6 plus 12, which is positive 6. So what has occurred over this interval is our, the slopes of our tangent lines have gone from very, very negative all the way to zero to more and more positive. So the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing. Increase. And I could have gone farther than negative two. I was just using what was in my window. Okay, the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing. Yes. Well, let's, let's test it, okay? Let's test it. Let's, let's do another point, okay? So I think that the concavity changes at 1. Let's see what starts happening after 1. Let's test 1.5 or 3 halves. F prime of 3 over 2. Huh, 3 over 2 squared is 9 over 4. So that's negative 54 over 4 when I multiply by negative 6. And... 12 times 3 is 36 divided by 2, that's 18, wait, hang on, let me do it this way. I'm just going to multiply 36 over 2 by 2 over 2. So 72 over 4, which is what? Positive 18 over 4, which is 4.5. So it's starting to, it's less positive, it's still positive, but it's less positive. F prime of 2, 2 was our critical number, so its derivative is 0. F prime of 3, 3 squared is 9, so that's negative 54 plus 36, which is negative 18. Where did the 1 come from? The 1 came from the second derivative equal to 0. I mean, really, technically, at this point, I'm still going on the assumption that 1 is the number. I haven't even moved on to the, next, to the third part yet. But I just know that because I'm trying to explain concavity from the perspective of it's concave up when the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing. It's concave down when the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. Concavity has to do with the slope of the tangent lines, which comes from the first derivative. Now, we're getting ready to 
use the second derivative to talk about it, and I'm going to explain that in a second. Yes. It tells you concavity. Is that all that it does? Like, that's the first derivative. Oh, the first the point of inflection, but yeah, I don't want to say you only use it for that. So does this mean that technically you can use the first derivative? You can. The second derivative makes yes, yes. What's your question again? Right. Yes, until we talk about applications, which well, we've yeah, done the applications like, with position velocity acceleration. Yeah. Acceleration is our second derivative. But remember, what does acceleration describe? What do, no, velocity is your speed with direction. Jared, what are you doing? Acceleration, what does it describe? It's the second derivative. No, it's not how quickly you move. It's, huh? No, it's not when you change direction. Think about, okay. You got position. Position where you're at. Velocity is position over time, change in distance over time. Acceleration. Is how fat is how your velocity is changing over that period of time. So it's the change in the velocity. So second derivative is the change of the first derivative, which the first derivative is the slope of the tangent lines. Yes. Which is what is it, Paul? Jerk. Third Which, is yeah, it's it's called jerk. It's like we don't we don't talk about it. Yeah, it's it. They don't really go past that. Okay, <laughs> don't get too comfortable. All right. Um, okay. So where was I in my explanation? So uh, the slopes of the tangent lines were increasing as we were getting up to one, and then after one, the slopes of the tangent lines started decreasing. Okay, um, now I drew them for the first part. Let me draw them for the second part. Okay, um, three. Now, do you notice where these tangent lines are in relation to the curve? From negative infinity to one, the tangent lines are above or below the curve? Below the curve. See how all of our tangent lines are below the curve? After one, where are our tangent lines? They're above the curve. Okay, look at my green back. Look at my green. Yes, that's lines. not below the function. Where? It's on the outside. Wait, 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 wait. It's on the outside of the function. It, it's, it is below the it is below the curve. It is below the curve. The curves right here, this is right here. If it weren't so steep, flatten it out. If it weren't so steep, where would it be? This is the tangent. It's on the outside of the outside, outside below, okay. whatever you want to do. Okay. okay? It is outside of our curve here. And then at one, our tangent lines are now, it's easy to see that these are above, but okay, the above to the right, whatever you want to how you want to describe it. Okay. Below and above the curve. They use that terminology. Okay. You gotta be careful about saying less than right. You gotta be careful about saying less than right. Um, if you need to, you can kind of tilt the curve over a little bit to see whether the tangent line is, is above or below. Okay? So if you need to kind of flatten this out or because the tangent line is below over here, kind of pull it out here, it is above. Okay? So concave up tangent lines are below the curve. You need to write that somewhere in your notes. Okay, concave up.
tangent lines are below the actual curve or function, but usually they use the word curve. So they are below or outside of the original function? Yes, the actual curve, f of x. I mean, they don't use the word actual, they use just the word curve, but you throw in the little adjective in there, okay? Concave down, or also um, f prime of x is increasing. Okay, concave down, the tangent lines are above the What? Like the third part of the question? Like the first three things? And to the left side of them, it's positive? Yes. So F prime and F sub prime. No. No. What? Tell me where F prime is positive. Where is F prime positive? No, I know what you're talking about, but where is f prime positive for this function? Where is f prime positive? From 0 to 2. Well, for part of that, it's concave up. For part of it's concave down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about right here. F prime of X is increasing. The values are increasing. Yeah. Um, values more negative to zero to more positive is essentially what's happening there. Okay, when it's decreasing, I'm talking about the values are more positive to zero to more negative.